Hey guys, this is Genesis with Sozo Education and Beauty Supply. And I am going to talk to you about the most efficient way that I have found to do these sprinkles with the Bubble Fondant 2.0. So with these, this was a double batch of the recipe that you get um, in if you once you purchase it or whatever. And then with the leftovers, when I honestly was just tired of making them because it was super late at night, I took them and made these out of them. So there was literally no waste. So, couple things to start off with. This is the color that I'm gonna end up doing today and this is a double batch work. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the sprinkle molds. The other ones that I just showed you, I used this one from Chunk of Dust. The way that her mold works is on, let's see, you see that corner has like a notch out versus the other ones do not. So that shows you how to be able to line everything up when you're going to press them out that it's on that side versus the other side. The only thing that kind of gets funky is whether or not this one goes this direction or this direction. And I like once you're doing it over and over again, this one has a different texture to it than what the other side does. So that's kind of how I remember. I don't know if when they print these things, if they could like um, how she's kind of doing like the gold or something like maybe the top part could be a different color than what the bottom is to even further make it faster to be able to do these. I don't know, but that is her mold. And then the other one that I have here is for Sophistication. <coughs> Excuse me. And with hers, she lines up um, all of hers with these notches on the side. This would be your cleaner plate and then the separation from your others. And she does have the sophistication up at the top to be able to line up in that way. Um, most of the time you can't see it though, but when you get into a routine of doing these, it's pretty simple. And for the mold like the moons that I'm gonna be doing, it's really a whole lot easier, honestly, than maybe like the stars. I think the stars are the most difficult to try to get like rearranged on there. So I would kind of say the same thing. I, I think it would probably be more of a pain in the butt on their side of it to actually um, make them in that way where if you did, cause this is such a thin piece already, you know, to have the top part be a different color, but I don't know. You know, I'm still learning and working through these too. So these were from the first batch I had done where I was absolutely hating my life. Um, and I really, really wanted to be able to make these in a way that um, not only like are we happy to make them, but you need to be able to make money with it. So, oh, I must keep on like, I was trying to, it might be better just for you to do one sheet. I don't know. I was like super gung ho at the fact that this time we are just gonna bust these out. And I wanna see quite literally like how fast I can bust these out because we need to make some money. So, um, I am using the tapioca starch. I do find that that is the best thing to be able to do this with. I started off using the cornstarch and my own personal experience with it was just that it, um, it was kind of a pain because it's slick and I wanted something that was gonna be more like flour because I seriously would equate this, I wanna say crap, cause, oh my God. But I wanna equate this stuff to sugar cookies. You do the first one and it's freaking amazing. 
And then after that, everything just goes downhill and we absolutely hate life. I don't even think I really need this at all, but um, we're not gonna do the whole thing with this, okay? Um, yeah, this is it all. I thought by taping, um, this is parchment paper, by the way. I didn't say that. Um, I thought by taping this, um, I think we're gonna have to get like some industrial type of stuff here that it would be amazing. However, not thinking so. But okay, so literally this is two, um, not two pounds, um, two batches worth. And all I'm gonna do is kind of create this linear type situation. And honestly, you want this to be more sticky than you do powdery to do what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so we're done here. We're gonna resituate and then come back. I totally feel like Elton Brown right now. I've been watching Good Eats. Like, you know Okay, so this is a pasta, pasta roli dealio. Um, I don't know how fine it gets, you would have to look it up, but right now I have it on the one setting, which is the largest one. And if I had to guess, it would be like approximately a 16th of an inch. Okay, you can go totally smaller than this. However, I'm gonna do it a 16th of an inch, okay? This is gonna be pretty loud, so bear with me. Oh, uh, uh, uh. okay. We kind of need electricity. That would help. Oh, come on. There we go. Let's do it like here. Okay, it is moving. I was about to totally like jam my fingers up as it's in here. Okay. Oh, uh oh. We're gonna have some breakage. But it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna put this over there and then be back. Okay, so I just. Um, moved that one over in with this one. I think this is going to be okay. And you see, this is not like super powdery, but it's also not like super sticky. Move just better. Okay. So we have that done now. We're going to go back over to the other one. Okay, back at point two. So, now we're gonna rock this crap out. Oh, I need the other one, this one. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one because it's the tiniest. Um, ideally, I mean like, um, this one is not as wide. However, like, it's gonna be okay. I'm going to gently, like, kinda, move it back and forth. I'm gonna pull it away from the one that is above there, okay? Now, we are going to pick it up from here. This one looks pretty good, okay? And because of that, I think, am I gonna come over here? I think I'm gonna come over here. Uh, yeah, you can see that, okay. So, I am going to poke these out 
and I want to get rid of these ones just because I said. Pop them out, dump them out, take my cleaner plate, now stuck to the other part, take all this credola, put it in here. I don't need to worry about um, doing the thing with it, uh, like closing it up and all that good stuff. So now we are just gonna rock and roll and press and go, press and go. I just gently pulled that one away a little bit. This one is looking perfectly. You can take off your little bit of excess. I'm not gonna um, worry about too much. I'm just gonna put that there. And now come over here. Maybe. Knocking a little bit off here. Okay. Cleaner plate. Oops. Oh, come on. Okay, so I can tell that this could use um a little bit more dusty on the things only because it's a little bit harder to be able to pull it off but we're not talking about like by much here okay at all so you can see like how fine this whole thing is this is super fun I also went out and bought like one of these little doohickeys, right? So it's like, ooh. But that's what happens and you don't need that much. So I'm really, really liking using Vine Baggy. Okay, line things up again. Press them down. Gently, I'm not really pushing down. I'm just kind of pulling away um, some people like to like really like push this that like down hard and like push it back and forth, but they can get smushed in there. So I don't prefer to do that. Another thing that you can do, take the bottom side of here and scrape across the back end of them. Um, and it makes it even cleaner. So you have to take this little bit off of here if you're gonna do that because Otherwise, legit, between like each one of them, um, distracting me, let's go. Um, in between each one of them. Oh yeah, if you don't do that, in between each one of them, then you're gonna have a little bit of a, an issue but this is like the perfect size for these whole things I mean and honestly this one it's coming out pretty clean I'm not even having to like you know go back and press all that stuff the only thing is with one of the other um, batches I had done I found that super easy to just I'm barely putting any pressure and it just takes that little bit off of it and makes it so perfect. I can't even tell you. Um, you could, if you wanted to, take your cleaner plate off. However, what I found was sometimes my little doodads in here would come up when I did that. So I decided that I liked the other method better. But do you, bro? because now that we have made this part super simple, we are gonna be rocking and rolling like no other. Now, I would say on the other thing, um, my 
pasta roller thing. I did try to price those out to be able to let you guys know like how much that it is. And I think the cheapest one that I found was, um, I think like 60 bucks. So that is definitely more of an investment. Um, but that was really only looking for my KitchenAid mixer. So you guys might totally, I was gonna try to pull this whole thing. I'm gonna move him down here, that way I don't have to reach as hard for it. Um, you might be able to find someone or a, a one that is cheaper than that, but I would definitely say go electric. Do not like get a hand cranky thing because the whole purpose of this is to be able to be more efficient. So whatever you do, whether you wanna find a female clay one or something, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna do this whole just super soft. Um, just get it electric, that's all I would say. Um, I have double carpal tunnel that I had surgery for. I did um, double at both times. So you definitely wanna be conscious of what your hands are doing. So because this one sucks a little bit, I'm gonna try to pay attention a little bit more to where I place this. And I'm really not pressing down that hard, okay? It may seem like it, but really not so much. And once again, I feel like the gentle scrapey scrape on here. I think probably, oh, why am I doing that? The next one that I do is gonna be um, even easier to be able to get everything off because this one does not have as much of the tapioca starch in there. So do you see how good, like, um, you don't have to like be flipping this over and things like that. And literally, I think that it is just because of the um, parchment paper. So I really, really, really hope that you guys can see how much more efficient that this can be. And you definitely need to have a plan. So I at first was trying to do, these are all gonna be a part of my sleepy time line. So I did some sleepy time bath bombs and I wanted some sprinkles to be able to go with them. And I had three different colors of sprinkles or of in the bath bomb. So I wanted to have those same three different colors to be represented in the sprinkles. It was green, blue, and purple. I thought those were all like more tranquil colors and would work. So I thought I'll make one batch and then split it up into the different colors and then in my head for some reason, because again, this was my first time doing it, 
I thought, oh, that's gonna be enough for everything and this is gonna be great. It was not. I absolutely hated life, so much so. And decided to step away from it, look up different comments and different things that people have been doing because mind you, this is still a newer recipe, right? So we're all kind of working through stuff with it and try to see what other people were doing. This is where I came across the owner of Chunk of Dust was saying that uh, what she uses to dust with is the cornstarch. And I was like, duh, that's a part of the recipe. Now, the only reason why I did um, the other, and I'm totally, I don't even care about these little happies right here. I'm just gonna put them all in there because you gotta think like when all of these are all mixed together, nobody's gonna see that. So you're fine. And then to be able to rehydrate when it does get a little bit more overloaded, then use the cocoa betaine to be able to moisten it up a little bit. So aha moment came. I decided that I was now gonna be rocking out the um, tapioca starch and cocoa betaine. And if I remember correctly, I think I got them all done in like an hour um, for the double recipe. And it was definitely like going through the learning curve of how to put it through the machine and all that stuff. And I still got it done that the double recipe uh, in that hour time frame. So you're only gonna get quicker. Okay, now this part, you can see how there's like little dudes hanging out here. No wasted stuff left behind. And with this, it is so much easier to be able to get up all of these little guys in here. This is just a, it, you can find them at Hobby Lobby in the cake decorating section. If you have any of the unmolding plates from the different brands, I think that could totally work too. Um, I'm just kind of kneading this inside of the bag a little bit before I take it out and do the next part just because it makes it easier. This stuff, I don't want to say it's not the nicest to work with because it is. It's weird how it goes through with little changes and everything. But I would definitely like to stay away from the sugar cookie vibes because I don't do that. I love to bake cookies, but I gave up on that crap a long time ago. I no longer do the little shapes and the little funky things. Literally, all I do is do the scoopables so they're nice and puffy. So all these little bits that are coming off are quite literally um, all of those little scrapey things that I did off of there. So I don't really feel like this at this point in time needs to be um, done again with the, the cocoa batain. I think this would be fine just by itself. I mean, like it's not really 
sticking to my hands. I think everything is incorporating good. So just for ease, I'm going to separate it out in half again. That stuck a little bit. The only reason why it stuck is because I did not go back after I did all the little scrapings and do the very, very light dusting of that. So now I am not gonna take you back over to the machine. I am just going to run it through the machine and then we are gonna come back. So the more squared off this whole thing is, the better that it's gonna go through the machine. So I'm not gonna um, flower start this part again at all. We did, you know, all of here, do your molds, all that jazz. But the rollers do much better when it has that little sticky. And you can see, I mean, look how many we already made, you guys. I don't know how many ounces that is. Let me see here. Um, right now we are at 122 grams or 4.3 ounces. So let me go back. I guess that's a little, like, you know, I had my other do designer from before too. But, all right, start this dude up. Come back over. Oh. I definitely could be a little bit wider with my dudes. So I'm gonna make sure that I put it in this way um, so I can have it be wider. Mochals butter, you see that? Definitely way better, okay? Especially if you were like, I mean, if you're just trying to get started and you wanna buy like the ones that are smaller where they only have like six of or something, cool. But this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one was an eight by eight. And look at how many more sprinkles that you can get. Guaranteed, these are gonna weigh less than what these are. But you need to think about that. Um, I would personally, hands down, um, spend that little bit of extra money, it's a couple dollars, whatever, and, you know, just build up your collection, get a few molds at a time, and start off slower, because, I mean, it's gonna take you a while to make the stuff anyway, you know? Plan for holidays, you know, take advantage of their sales and things like that. Um, but get the bigger ones. If you think that you're gonna use these for your bakey thingies also, then do that. But, um, get the, I guess I should say, okay, so some people, and by some people, I mean sophistication is doing where you can get them with either a uh, food safe, food grade um, material or the regular material. I know nothing about these things, okay, you guys? Um, so if you thought that you might could use them too, then again, spend that extra dollar $2, whatever it is. I really think I, yeah, I put way too much effort into that last grape. It really needs to just be like super gentle. 
okay. Um, and just get a couple molds at a time for whatever your set is. Come up with a plan and execute, you know, one by one. Start making some money before you buy all of them. Not that I did that. Um, but buy the biggest of what they have in order to make this. Oops, don't do it with that side with the little thingy on there. Um, buy the biggest one that they have. And I could tell you probably how they are choosing like how many that they would have available in a thing is based upon like how this feels in your hand. So, you know, they don't want it to be too gigantic. And I don't know how big that eight by eight one is, but I would most definitely say that um, the eight by eight one when using the pasta ruler is definitely a good thing. I'm gonna use this one because it's a little bit wider. Okay. So, going back to my plan with these, I decided which ones were going to be which shapes as far as like which color was going to be which shape and then in order to get kind of an even amount of them let's see if this one works any better this one has like a super i really think it's just like getting the angle down that you do it at so anyway um did my green, did my blue, fantastic. Go to do my purple, and uh, we started having some problems. For whatever reason, the cocoa betaine, and I did try it with other surfactants as well, just to put up the, the straight up color into there. And it was, um, really not doing so well so it turned blue now i won't give you the ratios or anything like that if you have bath and foams um i don't know if she just has it in the boot camp or how exactly that whole thing works but she has a color guide oh it's in her book uh so if you have i believe it's bath foam revolution that it's in, then you will get a color guide that she has using lakes. And the color that I absolutely freaking love off there is called Mitten. And I would most definitely say I am smitten with Mitten, except for when it mixes with cocoa betaine. I don't understand why. I am still learning about all of the chemistry things, but for whatever reason, it wants to be blue. Now, it does have blue in it. However, um, it's purple. When you look at the pigment and like you mix it, it's purple. So why won't it be purple once you mix the, um, well, in, in this, like, cause you're, at least the way that I do it, um, because I'll make, this time I did a, a double of the double batch, so I quadrupled the batch, cause I wanted to mix my purple and my green, and that way, I can go directly from these doohickeys into making the other stuff. So, 
so um, I'll separate out the dough and then that's when I personally color it and start working and all, the, all that in. So why, for the love, was it not being purple like I told it to be purple? So tried it with um, a couple of other surfactants and it did not work with those other surfactants. So I, or I did the same thing, I should say, with those other surfactants. So I tried adding more of the red, which I don't remember. It would either be um, red 27 or red 28 that you would mix it with. But either way, I got super mad and I started trying to mix those in, in there with it and was not doing the thing. Um, or so, no, it started, sorry. So basically, what I ended up having to do to get it to be purple, and where did I put that bag? It might look blue because of the lighting, I'm not sure. Um, totally forgot, let me put the other thing on. Maybe I'll be able to see it. I don't know. Um, it is like a light lavender, but I think it still kind of looks blue in the camera. So anyway, um, I ended up mixing one scoop of the bitten that was already mixed with its thing and then adding another scoop of e equal scoop of whatever the other red is and it ended up working out okay. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, I think that you could still use this one more time. However, I'm gonna show you what I would do if I wanted to, if it was like too powdered, let's say. I'm gonna take, this is the cocoa batain, and I'm just gonna put like a tiny amount in the palm of my hand and then just start mixing it like that. You literally only need just that super small amount, okay? And you can automatically like already see how it just brought everything back together again. And now this is play to -y. So we are going to repeat. I think my bag doesn't have as much in it. So, um, I am only gonna do one stripey doohickey with this. Um, and then, um, well I guess I can, I'll just put it through that way, a little bit wider of a way. Okay. Yep, I'm gonna run this back and do this again. So at this point in time, I'm gonna fast forward this until we get to the point where I show you how to do the noodles. I'm gonna kind of show you how to do it, but not show you, but I'm gonna kind of. So, um, fast forward.
So now I'm gonna take this and show you how I do sprinkles. The reason why I said I'm gonna show you, but not show you, is because I am gonna use my same thing, but I'm gonna use it on the fine noodle setting this time. And then just press. trying not to make them overlap on top of each other but I mean really honestly it doesn't even matter um, okay that's good enough whatever Okay, there were a couple extra um, from my machine. And because, oh, I guess this wasn't quite empty. But, you know, I'll do it anyway because I want to do this. So, um, give me one second and I'm going to add more of the tapioca starch to both of these. Like I said, I, I prefer the bag, so I'm just kind of going gently over top of these. And then what I would do is just sit there and let them wait to dry. Oh, is this? Oh, I think it is a it is a twisty thingy, and I'm trying to make it not be a twisty thingy because um, I'm special. So anyway, I would let them dry, and even these. I just let them dry like that. And you can see they don't have a whole lot of starchy thingies or anything like that on them. Um, and if you can, you know, just like lift this up, carry it somewhere else, whatever, or as you run it through your noodle thing, you can have your pan sitting right there. That would probably be smart. So that way they wouldn't get all, you know, extra eat or whatever. Um, you could totally use your extruder thing. I don't know. I'd have to look at the difference in the recipe for the extruder. So instead of it running through the noodle side, you could totally run it through your extruder and then be able to go and like cut them back. I know she did like mermaid hair at some point in time with the extruder. So whatever. But I think if you let them dry a little bit, when you go to chop them into the pieces, um, it just, it stays a little bit better possibly i guess um definitely having them starched in between that way when you go to collect all of these that they're gonna stay separated from each other until they completely harden but you know as you can see like i really barely did any of that starch and you can make a smaller noodle by running it through the machine at an even thinner setting and the thinner that you make that initial piece of dough then the better that this whole thing is gonna come out so I would avoid, you know, like trying to do all this with them 
um, just because the, the more separated out they are and the more dry before you do those things, the better. I'm just gonna come in here and like chop some of these larger ones that I seemed. Um, anyway, what else was I gonna say with any of the other mold thingies? I have not tested out the decal glucoside or the cocal glues glucoside. I have only used the recipe like as is. Um, if I mean, like, like obviously both of these like worked totally great. The only thing I would say, because like the stars are gonna be kind of your nemesis because they don't have any perfect, you know, like it's harder because they look the exact same versus these, they can be a little bit faster because of this whole thing. So if it were to be a possibility, like I said in the beginning of how I would adjust the mold is maybe having like the last top layer, or I, cause I don't even know how they're printed, right? I assume it's printed from the bottom up, you know? Um, but if that top layer could be a different color, so that way you for sure knew which one was the top, possibly a larger, um, like have it be a little bit more area for you to be able to like put your fingers here to press because there's a few times where I've like pressed into here just because of trying to get into there. So, um, you know, pick a side, whatever side, I don't know, but just a side that had a little bit more, maybe it's just like a, you know, where your fingers sit, have a little bit larger part there. So that way, as you're like flipping it over, you don't squeeze these guys. Um, but other than that, I'm like, they work great. Again, buy the biggest one you can if you're planning on actually making money with these because that's gonna make it be the absolute quickest. And I did save a little bit of this one because for the big stars that I'm doing, you can't really, maybe you can. Um, for the big stars, I want to combine all three of the colors. Um, the blue, the purple, and the green, and kind of marbleize them together to do these guys. So I'm saving that one for that one. And I would, oh, this would be, I don't know if you can see a size comparison um, next to them completely, but um, so like these guys are the ones that I did not run through the flat thingy first before I ran it through the noodle thingy. I just went straight through the noodle thingy. And these ones are the ones that I ran through the flat thingy first and then the noodle thingy. So total difference in the end result of what we have achieved there. If you guys have any more questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope that this has helped you. And I'm sorry I've been trying to get this out like, but um there's just been a lot so any questions let me know happy making